Hey guys, it's Malfoy here once again with a new build and possibly the start of builds for the entire league where I'll say this is my favorite and strongest character one after the other until we have an extra 10 favorite and strongest characters because I don't know, that's just how it seems to work out. But here we are, our favorite and strongest character so far and that is the Bladefall Blade Blast Cast on Crit Bow Pathfinder. So we use a bow to trigger our spells, both Bladefall and Blade Blast, uh, and also Asenath's Helm to trigger more Bladefalls so there are more blades on the ground. The way it works is that you use Bladefall to get some blades onto the ground, and then if you see those really big saw blades from time to time uh, underneath the Unicorn Vomit of MTX, then uh, that means that Blade Blast is triggering off of those uh, blades that have come from Bladefall, and we're getting a two-step process of huge deeps. Uh, hopefully, it's going to hold up for endgame single target. I've yet to really get there, but it's been extremely smooth up until now, right from level 38 up until a level, uh, I think we're 89, something like that. Uh, absolutely cruising, and a large part of that is because of harvest crafting. Uh, you see my gear in a few minutes, and the gear is pretty impressive, or at least it looks fairly impressive by normal standards, but it's all very craftable. It's all very easy to make. Uh, with the right harvest crafts and the right bases to start with and it lets you min max a sort of physical into elemental character pretty damn uh, highly min max highly yeah that's a word and it becomes quite nice for damage uh, because we are physical to start with that's what both of these skills are pure fizz spells and then we convert entirely into cold and you have plenty of sources of scaling through uh, gear and harvest crafting that gear that lets us get more damage than we otherwise would have uh, in previous leagues since it's a lot more accessible now we are using barrage as you might be able to tell to trigger the uh, cast on crit. The Asenath's Helm doesn't really require your cast on crit or your skills to hit at all. It's just a cast socketed spells. So it gives us an extra opportunity to pre-fire some skills and get some blade falls down before uh, having to attack a boss. But uh, you can also use Rain of Arrows if you'd really rather for your cast on crit trigger. It will add possibly just a little bit more screen vomit uh, because it's quite a lot of rain of arrows shooting around everywhere. It also requires less targeting and direction like um, blade, sorry, like barrage does, but we do use the volley fire jewel to make our barrage um, kind of spray in all directions, uh, at least in one sort of direction, uh, you know, cover about 180 degrees or so. So sacrificing a jewel slot makes barrage pretty damn reliable for that, but rain of arrows is an okay trigger as well. I just I've tried it out and I seem to like Barrage more for the proccing. It seems a bit more reliable, but you are entirely um, allowed to use Rain of Arrows if you rather so. Uh, however, you can see we fire those blade falls right before we even pop those mobs so that once there's actually something to cast on crit off of, then the blade blast will go off as well. And I have in the past done a blade blast blade fall character and it's fine to do it self cast. It's a two step process uh, or a lot of the time you're just blade falling only ever using blade blast for uh, pure single target. And there's still plenty of ways you can do self cast like that. Uh, it did end up feeling a bit shit in some situations where you were getting overwhelmed, like simulacrums, uh, because you still had to then cast your spells. This does automate the process a bit more. It should have less damage by probably a good margin, but hopefully it still has enough by the time we get to endgame that automating it makes more sense and rolling a Pathfinder lets us have infinite flask sustain, or at least close to infinite. You can just mash your flasks as you see fit, though if I hadn't already made like two or three assassins this league i'd say assassin would probably be the no-brainer choice just because it still gets plenty of damage but really smoothens out your crit chances without having to go overboard in other areas to get your crit up um, and then it's got a lot of movement speed as well but pathfinder is always a reliable cast on crit character for me so there's no real ill will or um, bad feelings towards using a pathfinder but obviously Assassin's kind of a big thing for just about everything now, especially cast on crit. Uh, and you could build it in different ways. You could also do one that's more 
pure poison, for example, you could have more uh, different types of DPS instead of just cold. You can see I almost died there, but up until um, like 89, I had yet to die in the character. And I think I have now with just a little like mistake here or there, but it should be a very reliable character in the end with about five and a half, maybe 6,000 life. Uh, Pathfinder, sustain through flasks, taste of hate getting boosted, the reduced LE damage from Pathfinder. We do have some life gain on hit. We will use some um, life spell leech, I think, uh, through its series flask. And this is just a little showcase of uh, the build without any MTX. So you can see the green blade fall um, and just default Herod of Ash and default Blade Blast. It's still rather pretty and in some cases more enjoyable than using the sort of other MTX. Uh, and I'm still using Herod of Ash even though it's probably not optimal anymore, but it's just kind of fun to see. So we still got a bit of min-max to go. In any case, let's see how I've built the characters so far. So here we are on a level 89 uh, Pathfinder called It's Raining Cock. Small K, uh, obviously because uh, Without the small K, the genius name was taken, so, uh, cock. Yep. Uh, and here we are with the character's gear. It's taken a while to kind of uh, finally get it all together, but it, always, it is all pretty easy to get uh, once you start rolling. The most important part being the cast on crit bow. And you can see these days you can get a really large spell damage roll on it, uh, realistically. Whereas before it was a lot harder. But all you really need is some essences of uh, woe, some deafening essences is what we used. And you can do it just by default. Put a deafening essence on it and uh, basically doesn't matter what else, what else is on there. Start with that and then start from there. But ideally you get the attack speed, the double damage mod. It's a little suffix there. And uh, just isolate those two modifiers. If you have full suffixes, you can then augment on crit and it will always give you cast on crit. Uh, so that's pretty comfortable and easy way to get the cast on crit on there. Cast on crit's not that hard to get in general anyway. And then I just simply multi-modded for a plus two socket of support and 30% chance to deal double damage while focused. But you can do different directions. You can uh, roll cannot roll attack mods, exalt on with a certain eye level of bow, you will always get plus one socketed gems instead. But this is perfectly fine since we do use an empower and uh, it ends up being rather um, just basically as good as it needs to be without spending a few more exalts to finish the craft. With something like that, and I'm a fan of the double damage while focused because most of your damage that's important against a boss fight is going to come in a three to four second window. So as soon as you get the focus craft, it will pop up on your bar and you can start pressing focus for bigger damage. Uh, so we are using currently inspiration a level four empower, which I made myself through a, a level three farm, you know, XPing it up. So solo self found there. Uh, blade blast, barrage, blade fall, and hypothermia at the moment. But for the longest time, up until very recently, I was using crit strike support because that lets us um, trigger our barrage quite a bit more reliably but now that i've got enough crit i'm happy to, to just uh get rid of the crit chance and get a more multiplier support uh so then we have our helm asanath's chant uh trigger a socketed spell when you attack with a bow it's pretty damn good because it's on a 0.3 second cooldown so it is a lot of extra blade falls and this is our little setup here so you can see it's popping in and off cooldown every single time um we get the 0.3 going and uh, there it is currently 0.3 cooldown it gives us a lot of blades on the ground and then if you just trigger it with blade blast let's see if we can just uh, slot that in somewhere else since we can't use it right now so you trigger it with uh, trigger all your blades with blade blast and something like that happens and that's the two-part process for our huge dps in this current build um yeah you can also, and uh, what I might do, is get a Arcanist brand attached to a blade fall for single target. So you put on Arcanist brand on the boss uh, when you want single target, and that's going to shit out even more blades. You can do a spell totem as well to shit out even more blades. If we really want to uh, try and lean a lot heavier onto our blade blast as our sort of damage source with the explosions going off. I've yet to do that because the damage has been okay, but I do have a spare slot to do that if I need to. Uh, so that's the two main items in the build. Uh, we then have 
I guess a bunch of min max around the character. Let's start with the quiver. Basically what you're just looking for here is some life and some crit multi. If you can get some attack speed, cool. If you can get some crit chance, that's fine. Accuracy is good too, but you want a spare suffix in the end so that you can craft um, crit chance and then chance to frenzy on crit because that gives us pretty reliable frenzy sustain all the way through the build. So I've even specced into more frenzy charges currently have uh, five total because frenzies are really easy to sustain on this character. I've still got a min frenzy craft here from a previous character, so ignore that. But uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of what we want there. A spare suffix so we can get frenzy on our crit. The ring, it's a ring I used on a previous character. Basically, you are just trying to get life and uh, assassin mark and then put on an extra life roll onto it through the harvest craft, which got life gain when hit with spells. And there's still a spare suffix that I might do something with, maybe some accuracy. I do still need a little bit of that. Uh, the other ring, just some life, accuracy, strength, resists, and then minus mana cost of skills. So that our barrage is damn near free and we can reserve almost everything. So as you can see, we can just spam away just thanks to pure regen. Um, the gloves, uh, let's say boots, tailwind, you know, reroll with crit. You can make a billion tailwind boots. I've got like literally 30 crit rerolls just ready to go and I have not been harvesting that hard. So that's really easy to make. Um, belt. I just grabbed a reduced flask charge life belt and then slammed on some chaos. Uh, remove add chaos till you get a good one. Craft some res, pretty damn easy stuff. Now two, uh, actually let's say three items that look pretty impressive but are also fairly easy to do. We start with the gloves. So what you have here is some temple based gloves. The Topotante's cold mod, so it's got percent convert to cold. Uh, just as a base and that's pretty much all you need to start with but they need to be level 71 to 74 uh, for the awakening uh, the crusader orb to work effectively so what you have here is um, just gloves with the cold conversion you need to fill up the suffixes with some stuff uh, in this case we went resists and attack speed so i started with um, gloves that just had some um, the conversion and also attack speed filled up resists and then um went in with a prefix slam and what we end up getting is uh with the crusader orb is one of three conversions you either get uh the cold the lightning or the fire and you can um, target slam those on there um, afterwards if you get the wrong one you can remove an add remove fizz add cold for example if you get uh, a fire one because we're trying to get 50 percent cold onto this one if we can since it's eye level 71 to 74 uh the crusader orb can't hit anything but um conversions so that's pretty cool uh but these days i guess you don't even need to do that because as long as you're making crusader uh with the sort of cold mod on there you can still augment on the new cold mod anyway uh with harvest crafting so they're pretty damn easy to make just need a base that has the uh sort of temple mod the other really easy base to make that looks pretty impressive is our hunter chest it's just a hunter chest no other second influence and uh, we don't need explosion but you can get it if you want uh with some awaken robes obviously i grabbed this chest that just had t1 life t1 percent life that's all it really had that's all it really needed uh two t1 um life rolls and it was 20 c you can then make the rest of it yourself so we put on cold resist because i kind of needed cold resist uh, you can slam caster mod and it's always going to hit spell crit. You can slam attack um, mod and it's always going to hit attack crit. So that's a perfect cast on crit chest right there. Uh, we then had some scum physical roll on the chest as a prefix. Got rid of that and now I've got spell dodge. But I might craft something else if I really feel like it or slam it. We can slam it over and over again. Slam and remove the result through harvest crafting until we get additional curse if we really want so it's pretty damn easy to make a thick chest these days like this thing was just you know anyone can make these they're ridiculously easy uh something that's a bit harder is the amulet here because we used awaken orbs to um an awakener orb to smash plus one fizz and fizz is extra cold together from two different sources you get two different sources of those smash them together and then hopefully um there's nothing blocking the rest of the suffixes to get rid of them and then add remove whatever you want and in this case i put on um, fire res lightning res still got crit multi that needs to be add removed until i've got a better crit multi roll since i've run out of those but uh in the end it's basically my dream amulet plus one with lots of extra cold damage 
good resists, and then I can roll high crit multi. So that's the gearing. Uh, it's pretty damn simple if you've got the harvest crafts, but you might be a bit stifled on harvest crafts um, to get there. And uh, they're all realistic enough, I think, if you're using your garden well enough. I don't think they're too hard. Uh, so gear like this, not something I really could have achieved in the past on much of a budget, but now it's definitely doable. Uh, our flasks are currently just a life flask, movement speed flask, uh, silver flask, diamond flask for crit, Taste of Hate, which gives us a lot of extra damage and a lot of extra defense. And I'm probably going to get rid of the Silver Flask for a lot of content to run at series instead, but um, not sold on if I'm going to get um, Onslaught back in the build, probably through the Abyssal Drill just to get some uh, Onslaught on kill instead of the Crit Multi so that we can still zoom around. But still undecided about that one. Uh, the Passive Tree, pretty straightforward, maybe, I think. I don't know. Going Life getting the cold conversion there. Uh, we do currently just have our little volley fire for barrage so that it shoots out more barrages, as you can see. Uh, let's just give you a quick comparison. There's barrage with volley fire. Here's barrage without volley fire. So it just makes your uh, targeting a lot easier on single target and on plenty of enemies because you don't have to specifically hit the enemy or click the enemy very accurately. Currently I have acro, we'll probably get phase acro. Got one cluster jewel, go over in a sec. Um, travel, 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 spell crit, crit, multi, spell stuff, uh, and then a jewel that's just, you know, you can make these pretty easily just with um, the two base crit mods, slam on some life, might slam on one other thing. Uh, our current jewel is being reused from the Frostblades Assassin, which goes into Vengeful Commander, Blanketed Snow, branches off twice. Our little um, mediums currently give us just a bunch of crit, so it's the crit type of jewel and it gives us pressure points for crit and uh, double damage unholy might which is just an extra fizz's chaos i think it's not that good but a bunch of extra damage uh, which can be resisted since we don't have any chaos pen uh, currently have one feast of flesh then going in for another feast of flesh in the end or another fettle possibly but haven't yet crafted this one fully uh, another crit one with pressure points and precise commander. These are pretty expensive, but you can make them yourself with maybe like 500 to 1000 alts pretty reliably, I think. I ended up getting one after maybe 400 alts, something like that. Although like precise commander isn't even that good anymore. So pressure points plus any other side crit roll is pretty good regardless. Since precise commander, hardly worth it for the 12 extra crit multi compared to some of the other things that just give you a bit more crit. But um no crit multi so that's the character so far we should maybe hit about 6k life by the end of the character and be pretty thick and hopefully have all the single target in the world uh, the rest of the gems i can go over real quick frost bomb arcane surge increased duration and second wind so that's just a bit of uh, exposure on the enemies that we need it on um, herald of purity enlighten herald of ash and hatred herald of ash is based off of fizz so it does give us a bunch of extra fire damage but it's not that effective anymore. I can easily swap in um, Herald of Ice by this point instead, and I might, but I kind of like the um, aesthetics of Herald of Ash. Probably will still do Herald of Ice though. Uh, and then over here, Ice Golem, Precision, Dash attached to Second Wind, and then up here is Blade Fall with Spell Cascade, Power Charge on Crit, and Conk Effect. So the idea is to try and um, make these as close together as possible for the additional single target of the Blade Blast. And uh, you can, not level your spell cascade because it gives you um, better area if you have a higher level so if we keep it at level one we might be able to uh, close in our blades even further but maybe it's not worth because it does do some decent damage of its own we have to try it out and see i think that's enough for the guide though hopefully you're not too confused thank you very much for watching um, i will hopefully have a very positive video about the end game of this character in the next video but uh Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.